Okay, so there was this pretty interesting thing that came across as I've been browsing Discord again. And it's a web scraper that basically can... So you, I guess you set up your own web scraper. And you can turn it into an API that you can use to hook into other applications. So it's called CrawlX. And let's see. We can go into here. And I guess you get an example of what it is kind of like right here very interesting um let's go back to that actually so if i if i remembered to put my brightness all the way up let's see use docs to know more about the api endpoints demo project at here and source code available at here so this is, let's see, our raw data, our headers. So it basically, huh. New scraper website. Okay. Hmm. So yeah, it's a pretty basic scraper and you can hook it in as an API to other things. So let's go to... Best API get ping index extract. Okay, so that's everything there. Let's see validation do to do. Okay. Okay, so it allows you to extract structured data from HTML documents or URLs using CSS selectors. It is particularly useful for front-end developers who need to scrape data from websites for various purposes, such as web scraping, data mining, and content aggregation. So yeah, you could take the API and turn it into an RSS feed if there isn't one available, I guess, as well. Extra... <coughs> Let's see, using CSS selectors. Support for nested data extraction using nested selectors accepts both HTML content and URLs as input. So we'll actually go pick on the Guardian. Is it that one? I never use it, so... I want the copy link. So we will go to that one. Hmm. So it's just getting the title. It looks like. Um, let's pick on that one. Okay, here we go. That's more useful. So yeah, it extracts all the text from it. Actually, this would be really useful. So, for a lot of other things too. So you could set this up as a way to, yeah. Front end prototyping, can use CrawlX for quick prototyping without the need to set up a back end server. Let's see, deploy them on serverless platforms like Net Netlify. Request format. Send a post request to extract with the following JSON payload. Let's see, selectors key one, key two, optional V HTML content to extract from the user, either HTML or URL. The URL of the website to scrape, use either HTML or URL. Dictionary of CSS selectors to extract data from. 
So you are basically going in, so you could say like LI, and then you're trying to extract the text from it. If you say H, I think there's another example on Discord over here. So like if, for example, you could get, you could have the type B attribute and put href down here. So if I copy, if I scrape off of, So like this one right here, can I I don't know how to zoom and make the text bigger. But so like going off of a couple of them. So you're gonna get this and your response format is gonna be a JSON. And so here's an example here provided. So you could curl up to your server if it's local, whatever. Then you get content type JSON, and then here's your data payload. And so in here you are, this is sample HTML. So like you would provide the HTML or the URL. Um, let's see, yeah. So you would, in this example, you've got the URL right here. And then you've got your selectors that you want to scrape from that you can use right there. So in here, you've got heading, you're getting the CSS for H1 and then the text. And then you're going for a paragraph, you get the P in the text. So in this example for Bugs Writer's blog, <clears throat> you've got your selectors being blogs. Let's see, CSS is selectors LI. Multiple true, so you're looking for multiple of them. You're grabbing a lot of them. Type HTML, children. And so you're digging into the children of that list element. And you're going to the link. And you're looking for, so you're looking for the A attribute. And the href. And then the name, so you're getting the text from the link as well. So then you can take and render that into a list elsewhere. And let's see, that would give you this response here. So actually, we get this response here. So our data, it's not quite prettified, but We could almost do it. Okay, so we've got a link and then a name for the link. So that's one element there. So it's finding every single link off of Bugs Writer's blog and separating them out, basically. So you've got your link and so on and so forth. And it extracts it from the href so you can do some funky things with it and then render it out into a nice little list like for Newsboat. But yeah, that is a crawling API. It can use, be used for a lot of things. Like I would, could find a use for it in a couple places that would be useful, but that's just me for my applications. But it's pretty simple. You could run it even locally, I think, if you put an application and set it up so that it used crawl X that way. Or well, no, they're going referring to the extract on the on render site basically. But yeah. So yeah, you can give it a list of things, it'll process the request. Host your own if you really want to, which is probably the best way you're gonna do it. So it's a Python application that you can host on your own and request from your own home place, integrate it into your application and scrape away. So with my hard drive that I killed with everything in it, and since I don't have my outro available, this is the outro. Oh. So I, I'm less than 40 subs away from that 1,000, so give people that cool, oh, reason to install certain extensions that will not be named and get me up to that 1000 so 
yeah, and then hopefully I will be able to recover from the dumb mistake that I made that I posted on Discord and killed my drive over. But yeah, I like, subscribe, do that, all that stuff, feed the algorithm, and I will see you guys later.